This is a PDP 1134. PDP stands for Programmed Data Processor and that's a name that Digital choosed because computers came from IBM and uh, they wanted to make something different. So they made Programmed Data Processors which is in fact the same as a computer but it has a different name. Let's have a look inside. We see a lot of boards, very big boards. Uh, this is from a time when CPUs have not been one chip. They have been several boards because uh, you, you didn't have this large-scale integrated chip. Um, the first two boards on the right side, here you see the control and the data path, they belong to the CPU, so the first two boards are in fact the CPU. Then you see the board with the red handles that goes with this flat ribbon cable to the front panel, it's the front panel. Uh, console driver, then we have memories, two boards, and we have the serial interface that goes via this small bright cable to this VT420 uh, terminal. On the back side we have the big circuit breaker and the main power switch next to the input cable you have to switch it on. Then on the front panel there is the power switch for the entire machine. And now I show you how to program this unit. First the clear button to uh, erase the display. Then we have to enter an address. I choose 2000 for the starting address of my program the load address button, then the first data, deposit, then the second uh, command, deposit, and the program counter uh, continues automatically, it jumps two uh, numbers higher for the next uh, command. You don't see the address here in the display, but there is a, a display address button where you can check on which step in the program you are. So I type in here a small program where you will see um, what it does. So I made a mistake, I have to clear that and re-enter that uh, number again because I didn't clear um, the display for a shorter number so I had the rest of the of the first entry together with the second entry so I, I mixed it up together so it doesn't matter how you enter your numbers you always have to look at the display and the number in the display goes to the memory and as you can see the numbers go from right to left so you can enter uh, the numbers with a leading zero or with more than one leading zero or you first press the clear button and then uh, enter the numbers that you need so you just have to make sure that none of the the command numbers of the command be, uh, from the command before stays in the display. Now the last command is a jump address to 2000 to the beginning of the program. We load that address, we check um, what is in 2000 and then we check all the other uh, memory locations so we can see if we 
have any mistake if there is something wrong if everything is in the right uh, order two thousand the last command we take this as an address and we press control and start and that's what the program does it spits out ascii code to the console terminal at 300 baud well the speed 300 baud is not uh, part of the program the, the hardware has set to do that with switches and of course the console terminal with the setup that's the program itself you see the address data and comments and this is the programming card where all the commands of the PDP-11 are collected. There are not so many uh, if you compare it with modern microprocessors. But, uh, well, you can do a lot of things, of course. And the PDP, by the way, is the machine where Unix has been written on it. The first Unix version has been written on a PDP. I'm not sure if it was a PDP 11 or maybe one of the earliest. And now turn it off, control and hold to stop the program. The display shows the last address and then power off. Now it's time to take it apart. Well, first of all, unplug all the cables, switch the power off, especially unplug the mains cable. That's always a good idea when you're working on electrical things. I first remove the front panel interface because the flat ribbon cable is in the way to, to remove the other boards. <coughs> the cable goes directly to the front panel which is only LED display and keyboard. This one is the boot uh, strap loader, I think that's the name. Um, the first CPU board, the control board, the second CPU board, the data path. Data path means there is the arithmetic logical unit on it there is all the uh, well the how do you call that that's a memory the first one and the second memory so these memories had a lot of switches and jumpers you always had to configure where the memory starts and where it ends, especially if you have two memories. That's the console uh, terminal interface where the RS232 interface from the console goes to. <coughs> and that's the Unibus Terminator. Every bus needs a terminator and that's the card for it. And here we have some jumper cards. You always need these jumper cards when a slot is empty. There is also uh, there is also a way to uh, install jumpers on the back plane, but the jumper cards are a little bit easier. So the data path, as I said, you see the four big chips here. They are for the arithmetic logical units. Uh, they did some bit slicing technology, so each one is good for four bits. So we have four of them. Show 
if I remember right, this is a 16 bit CPU, but most of the DEX CPUs were 18 bit or 22, so I think we have an 18 bit. Control path, that's where the commands are converted into uh, directions where the data is flowing. It's a little bit complicated to explain in some short words. As you see, it's all TTL chips, 74 series, everywhere. It uh, needs a lot of power to power these chips, so for those who want to have a look at home, you see the module number. This is a uh, an identification for all the deck modules and parts. You see date code 77. It's quite a bit old. The boards they don't have any uh, uh, protection paint on it. It's bare. Uh, not copper, it's uh, tin uh, plated. M7856 console interface with a lot of switches to uh, set the board rate, the address of the, of the board. So you may have two of these, doesn't make a lot of sense, but then the second board needs, of course, a different address. There is the Terminator card. Never install this in a mod, in a modified Unibus. Um, you see there is a lot of resistors, of course, it's a, it's a terminator. And the few chips are to uh, turn around a signal that is called SEC. So this is used, I think it, uh, it's something like a DMA or something. Bus grant continuity, so if you don't have uh, a card in your slot, you need this jumper card here. It has four jumpers on one side and one jumper on the other side. So you can never have a gap in your bus. So that's one of the CMOS memories, one of the first with semiconductor memories uh, in this time. They are manufactured by DEC. DEC had their own uh, chip plants. Date code 78. Last check 81 by someone I don't know. A lot of gold of course, but for the price of these boards, that's okay. And you need a good contact. So that's the bootstrap card. These are some ROMs. You have ROMs for every device you want to boot. And this cable here goes to the front panel and it tells the computer to start, stop, power on power off. So here we have another board which came from a big container. Uh, it was tested in 1995 by myself. It's already 21 years ago. It worked and it looks a little bit weird. Maybe you people have an idea what it could be. It's a core memory, a magnetic core memory. This is the second board that you didn't see because the other one was on top of it. <coughs> they are sandwiched together. And here you can see all these tiny little wires. It looks a little bit like a LCD display. You have row and uh, column drivers. Each driver drives one wire that goes vertically or horizontally through this uh, ferrite course. Here you see a 
microscope uh, photograph. The round wires are the sense wires, they are used to read the data. Um, unfortunately, the board didn't work anymore. I want to show you how it works and especially how it keeps the data when you power off the unit. Because core memories are working magnetically, so they don't need any power to keep the data. So you can power off the, the, the computer and power it on and restart your program and it works. But unfortunately this one doesn't work. So I wouldn't, I don't explain how core memory works. There are a couple of very good videos on YouTube that explain it in every detail. But let's lo have a look on the power supply here. As I said before, um, this is all TTL technology. So 5 volts are the most important voltage here and we need a lot of power. So this bar is to uh, hold down the flat cables that come from the system, so it's a cable uh, retainer. Then we have a couple of screws on the top <coughs> and some more on the back side. And then we can remove the top cover, which reveals not too much, but as you can see in the center is a very, very big and heavy transformer. This is the main transformer for the entire system. And left and right on it with the heat sinks are uh, the power regulators. So, depending on how much or how many backplanes you have installed and how many boards, you can add uh, one or two of these power regulators, especially for the 5 volt, to have more amps, so they go in parallel. Here is a view from the, from the bottom side. There is still as you can see, date of manufacturing 78, serial number, market, Europe, OEM, yes, okay. Let's remove the cover and here we see the back plane. <coughs> and it's all wire wrapped. So even if this is a, a quite a large quanti quantity production, you have wire wrapped backplanes. They are made semi automatically. I think some of them are even made by hand with some. Um, here is a 5 volt power supply 5 volts, 32 amps. Here is a minus 15 volt. And on the top we had another 5 volt power supply, so we have in total 5 volt and uh, 64 amps for this unit. There is a second backplane which is as you can see completely separated from the first backplane. If you want to use that uh, the second backplane you have to install a jumper card which is basically two cards screwed together with some ribbon cable from one card to the other. So just jumper jump all the signals over from one backplane to the other. One funny detail, DEC always uses used non-magnetic screws. As you can see the washer here is magnetic but the screw is not. This is because they are made of stainless steel. So every deck machine, every PDP, every VEX uh, ha has used uh, stainless steel screws. I don't know why, but that's their trademark, so to say. That's the front panel. As you can see, there are 0 to 7 uh, 
number uh, keys is because we have the octal system. There's the power switch. Uh, the keyboard is on a separate board. Then we have the display, uh, LED displays, six LED displays. That's the connector that goes to the front panel interface. And the rest of this board is a little bit of uh, LED drivers. We have six transistors here. You can see four of them. Six transistors for the, for the displays and that's it.